All right, so Janelle would welcome on the Gospel Spice podcast, my friend. Ah, oh, Stephanie, thank you for having me. All right, I was trying to remember where and how did we meet and uh, t- remind me, I forget. How did you that know, happen? I think that you, it was during COVID, I think, and mm-hmm. you were posting some stuff in the Christian Podcasters Association. Does that ring a bell? Okay. And then you started, Maybe. you were on some people's podcasts. I think Amber Cullum and Tim Winders, Does that sound... Yes, yeah, that's right. And I started listening to those episodes and I thought, oh my goodness, I have to talk to this uh, woman uh, because we, <laughs> your story is something that really, uh, I mean, obviously you've been on my podcast and you've shared it, but it's just so powerful and something that um, mm. resonated with me. So I wanted to invite you on and then we kind of became friends. So yeah, yeah. I couldn't quite remember how we had met, but that makes sense. So uh, tell us about your story and how our two stories kind of have a lot of similar similarities, I guess, indirectly. So tell us about you a little bit. Yeah, well, um, I'm a mom and a a wife and we have four kids. And uh, I grew up uh, in a Christian home, gave my life to Christ at an early age and kind of went through my own times of wandering and wondering and ups and downs um, with faith. But around the age of 30, so uh, a few years ago, uh, for those not watching this video, <laughs> <laughs> not and, that long ago, <laughs> but a bit, maybe a little bit. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I just really felt this nudge. Uh, I was doing some women's ministry and I was reading this book called Crazy Love by Francis Chan. And in the book, he talks about uh, being all in for the Lord because he's all in for us. You know, his love compels us to do uh, what the world might consider crazy things, but uh, just to be moved by that love and that power. And at the end of the book, he gives all these examples and they're of people doing extraordinary things. And I wanted a story like that. And I went to my husband, I said, I want to be all in. I think we should do something extraordinary. <laughs> uh, and so uh, fast forward, I threw out a lot of different ideas. I tend to be the more dramatic one in our relationship. My husband tends to be the more stable one, which is good. And um, he didn't, necessarily love some of my ideas, but we pray, we were praying about them. And one day I came across an ad for exchange students and uh, my heart just kind of leapt with that. And I, I went to the Lord. I said, is that for us hosting exchange students? Um, and to be honest, Stephanie, I was a little resistant to it because I thought, well, I had all these big ideas and God, is this really the right idea? I don't know. And then again, another ad just came, like popped up on my Facebook one day and my husband and I prayed about it, felt that nudge from the Holy Spirit, reached out to a coordinator. We ended up hosting our first daughter from uh, the Netherlands when our, so we have four kids and our youngest um, biological child was just barely a year old when we started hosting. Um, and I think we're on to number five. Uh, as far as exchange students goes. And then we have another one coming here in the summer. And I now am a coordinator um, as, a, a, you know, an exchange coordinator with the secular organization. So um, yeah, it, it became a ministry. Um, and uh, it's something, it is crazy. <laughs> People told us we were crazy, but it's uh, been an incredible journey. Um, that's really opened my heart up to young women from different cultures and different backgrounds who, uh, especially who have never known someone who deeply loves the Lord. Um, And so, yeah, it's become a real, and God's done a lot of, um, you know, work on me in the process, which has been a good side product. So Mm -hmm. that's been gracious. And I love you so much for this, because I came to the States as a foreign exchange student when I was 17, and my American mom and dad had three kids. Their youngest was one. (laughs) <laughs> so, and I was there first, right? And I think they've had probably five or six or seven, kind of like you over the years. Um, and so I've seen how it has, how the Lord has really used them to bring so many people closer to him. And I was the first. And so that was really exciting. So that's why I love what you're doing, because I, I am the living proof of the power of mm-hmm. welcoming a non-believer into your family and having the courage to trust the Lord with it when it doesn't necessarily make sense and it totally disrupts your family dynamics. I mean, it doesn't make sense when you have a one-year-old to suddenly take on a 16 or 17-year-old kid from Europe somewhere. Uh, you know, then the Netherlands for you, it was obviously France for me the first time around. So um, mm-hmm. 
you're so intentional about the students you receive. So do you want to tell us what you do for them and specifically how you engage in cultural conversations to bring them closer to understanding who Jesus is? Yeah, well, like I said, I'm a coordinator for a secular organization. Mm -hmm. So part of my job is just to have relationship with young mm -hmm. people. Um, so that makes it easy, right? Because I'm somebody in their life already that they're having uh, conversations with that they um, are looking to for some support. Um, but then, you know, Stephanie, <laughs> you know this, you can't keep quiet about something that means everything to you. You know, the thing is, we talk about the things we love. That's why I talk about chocolate all the time. <laughs> and I love chocolate too, which is part of the reason I love you so much. <laughs> but yeah, it's like Jesus eventually is going to come out in one of our conversations. He just is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I do a podcast and we can talk about that eventually here if you want. But the thing is, before I ever ask a girl like, hey, do you want to co-host on the podcast with me? She already knows. Uh, that there's something different about our family. She mm -hmm. already knows that, um, you know, I, I love Jesus and maybe she's never necessarily met someone quite like our family before. Um, it's just something, it's a byproduct of who we naturally have become in Christ. It doesn't mean we're perfect, far from it. Uh, but, we, and, but that's part yeah. of the beauty to not be perfect because everyone knows better than to believe someone who says they've got it all together. And for me, I remember, you know, with my American mom and dad, what, what one, one, one of the most endearing traits was to actually see them being imperfect together. Mm -hmm. uh, I, w I remember watching them argue over like simple little things. <laughs> but then the crazy thing is, I remember watching them reconcile. Mm -hmm. And the arguing, I was familiar with that. The reconciling, not so much. And so the the forgiveness, the putting the other first, the sacrificial love that comes from Christ, that is so powerful. And that's what, I mean, any 17, 16, 17 year old needs, but especially in our generation. So you're, you're inviting them into your home so that you can display Christ in a setting where they are more receptive in many ways, because they're coming to experience what your family has to offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just, it's just loving them, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Jesus said, right, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so when we live like that, when we're like, okay, Lord, uh, I, I'm a mess. Uh, you know how I yelled at my husband this morning and how I got so frustrated with this little thing, but I'm going to come to you and I'm going to give you this little offering, this life. And I'm going to say, okay, God, I want it your way. Help me with my unbelief or help me with the things that I fall short on, but I want you in this. And then we go out and we just love somebody. God takes that little offering and he does incredible things with it. And whether a young woman comes to Christ or not, like in your case, we don't have control over that. And that was something I had to learn pretty quickly, but we get to be obedient to him and see amazing results, not only in that person's life, but in our faith journey as well. You know, that song oceans, it came out yeah. about 10 years mm -hmm. ago. Yeah. I remember listening to it and thinking, that's what this feels like. It was right around the time, you know, we started thinking about doing something and I'm like, wow, like you called me out into the ocean. Like, I can't see it. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to drown if you don't hold on to me. But the thing is he does hold on to us when we, we step out in mm -hmm. faith. He's, he's right there. Yeah. So what are some of the things you would tell this younger version of you who's considering having her first foreign exchange student? What would you tell her with what you know today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was really afraid. I mm, was really afraid. Mm, mm. Um, I was afraid we would screw up. I was just talking to someone the other day who told me, well, we're not, we're not a perfect family. And I'm thinking, yeah, no, that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, yeah, no, no, uh, be authentic mm. and, uh, and ask the Lord, like God for me. And, and in that time I was like, okay, we have the means we have the ability. Yes. It means shuffling things around. It meant, you know, our kids are going to room together, or it means that we're maybe going to be stuck at home more because we can't eat out as much or whatever. Yeah. It might mess with our life a little bit, but if God is nudging on your heart to do something, whether it's hosting an exchange student or whatever, um, you know, 
trust him with it. Say, okay, Lord, I, I remember just weeks before we started hosting our first daughter from the Netherlands, um, there came, there was a story in the local newspaper just half an hour from our home of uh, a bad exchange student experience that made the news. Um, and it was, it could have ruined uh, somebody's reputation. Like it was just a really bad, messy situation. It turned out the all allegations were untrue, but it was scary. And my friend and I, who's a strong believer, we were walking and she's like, did you see this in the news? Your husband, who is our primary, um, you know, breadwinner, I was at home with our kids. Uh, you know, this is a really, this could be a really scary mm -hmm. situation for you. Um, and I was terrified. Uh, but the thing is, when I read the Bible, like it says over and over, don't be afraid and to take those fears to the Lord. So I invited over all the, not all, but most of the godly women that I knew, I said, come on over, we're going to pray over her room. Let's just pray. But honestly, Stephanie, that prayer was a lot for me. It was mm -hmm. prayer for me that God was in this. And even if, kind of like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, our God can do it. But even if he doesn't, even if something goes totally south, he's going to use it for his glory. Because we are taking what we have and we're just saying, Jesus, multiply it according to who you are, not according to our, you know, our feeble efforts. The other day, uh, I'll just share this. And, you know, my daughter, she comes to me and she's got this drawing. And it's, you know, she's seven. It's kind of a mess. <laughs> I mean, it's sweet. And she's telling me all the things she loves about me. I mean, just beautiful. And I'm thinking, isn't it amazing? Like my daughter, she puts all this effort into something beautiful. I don't need it. I don't need her to do that. I don't need her to write down all these things. It's beautiful. She's doing the work, but it's not like it's required of her. Do you know what I mean? And I think sometimes we think, oh, I've got to do this to show God that I'm doing. No, 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 no. It's an overflow of the love that we already receive that we get to give our offering. Yeah. And now a brief message from Gospel Spice. At Gospel Spice, you often hear us say, pay, play, and pray Gospel Spice forward. Well, I'm here to tell you how to play Gospel Spice forward. You can share a podcast with your friends and loved ones. If you're listening to an episode and it really touches you and you think of a friend or a loved one, simply text them and share our episode with them and let them know, I was thinking of you and I heard this. I think it's going to bless you. It's just that simple. Now, another way to play it forward is to leave us a review wherever you're listening to the podcast. Help us with that algorithm thing so that others can find Gospel Spice. Thank you. Mm -hmm.